So back again, just real quick, if we go to the timeline of the prophets and we see exactly where we're falling here when we're talking about Ezekiel, we see the fall of Babylon. We see prior to this, the fall of Samaria, and then we're coming up, coming up on the destruction of the temple. So I should be able to go in one more slide. Oh, it didn't do it this time. There it is. So if we zoom in here, man, my arrow's gone. That's weird. You guys can see Ezekiel there somewhere between 625 and 575. We see them in that time period. These are some notes that, again, I pulled straight from John MacArthur's Blue Letter Bible intro to Ezekiel. It says, from the historical perspective, Israel's United Kingdom lasted more than 110 years through the reigns of Saul, David, and Solomon, then the divided kingdom. Do you guys remember what the divided kingdom consisted of? No. Twelve tribes. Yes, but what happened to it? Where did they break? What was it called? North and South. There we go. Michelle's right. So we have the Northern and Southern Kingdom. And that extended from 931 to 721-ish, 22. Israel fell to Assyria in 722, leaving Judah the surviving kingdom for 135 years, which eventually fell to Babylon in 605 to 586 BC. In the more immediate setting, several features were strategic. Politically, Assyria's vaunted military might crumbled after 626 BC. Lily, would you please stop? Thank you. Um, yeah, and we see that, uh, and the capital Nineveh was destroyed in 612 BC by the Babylonians and the Medes. The Neo-Babylonian Empire had flexed its muscles since Nabopolassar took the throne in 625 BC, and then Egypt under Pharaoh Necho. These are all things that we talked about in great detail. Okay, I see you now, Tatia. Okay, thank you. I'm going to hang up. So that, that kind of gives you the backdrop. He does a really good job at breaking down the Bible the or the whole section of Ezekiel, but I think we should do that on our own when we get into the reading. So let's go ahead and start with Ezekiel chapter 1. And we are we have a guest speaker tonight. Here, here. Go ahead and read the first three verses off the, the TV screen. 30th. Here. Among captives, Shabar. The heavens were open, and and I saw visions, visions of God on the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year. Of Jehoiachin's <laughs> captivity, the word, the word of the Lord expressly, expressly. Ezekiel, Ezekiel the priest, the son of Boozy. Chaldeans by the river. The bar and the hand of the Lord was upon him. Nice. Nice. You don't have to read that, bud. Fantastic job, Luke. We're going to get ready for Levi. Good job, Lukey. Okay, Levi, I want you to read until it says uh, feet. <clears throat> Okay, no. They, then I looked, and behold, a, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging, raging fire, engulfing, engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it. And radiating, radiating, radiating out of its mist, like the color of 
amber out of the midst of the fire also from within it came the likeness of four four living creatures and this was their appearance they had likeness of men okay i'm gonna take over you did a fantastic job okay babe go ahead you're up each one had four faces and each one had four wings their legs were straight and the soles of their feet were like the soles of calves feet they sparkled like the color of burnished bronze the hands of a man were under their wings on their four sides and each of the four had faces and wings their wings touched one another. The creatures did not turn when they went, but each one went straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. And each of the four had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces. Their wings stretched upward, two wings of each, one touched one another, and two covered their bodies. Okay, stop, Landon. You're up. And each one. Each one went straight forward. They went wherever the spirit wanted to go, and they did not turn when they went. When they went, as for the life, life, likeness. Of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. The appearance of birds went back and forth among the living creatures. Fire was bright, and out, out of the fire was fire went lightning, and the living creatures ran back and forth in appearance like a flash of lightning. Now, as I looked at the living creatures, behold, a wheel was on earth beside each living creature with its four faces. The appearance of the wheels and the and their work is color of air, and all four had the same like likeness, and the appearance of their working was as if were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Okay. Barrel. So barrel is an is a is like a stone, a precious gem, right? Like amber. Okay. So, so this is this is Ezekiel. He's out on the, the bank of the river. He sees this whirlwind appearing, and he sees these four beasts, the seraphim, and each each beast has the face of a man, the face of a lion, the face of an ox, and the face of an eagle at the same time. They have two wings pointed up, two wings pointed down. There's circular wheels below them, and there's fire and lightnings coming all around it. This is the experience that he has. Okay. Yeah, man. You know and that you... kind of reminds me. It kind of reminds me of a uh, revelation with all the different animals, whatever you know. <laughs> oh, I would agree. I sure would agree. I'm going to finish yeah. this chapter, and we are going to talk about it. So, okay. when they moved, they went toward one of the four directions, and they did not turn aside when they went. As for their rims, they were so high they were awesome. He got. Do not make him do that. I didn't make him do that. You were pointing at Max's face for him to do it. No, I was rubbing it. Okay, don't. Max okay. is asleep. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties with all these kids. <laughs> when the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Wherever the spirit wanted to go, they went because there the spirit went and the wheels were lifted together with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up together with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. The likeness of the firmament above the heads of the living creatures was like the color of an awesome crystal stretched out over their heads. And under... The firmament, their wings spread out straightward one to another. Each one had two which covered one side, and each one had two which covered the other side of their body. When they went, I heard a noise of their wings like the noise of many waters, like the voice of the Almighty. 
a tumult-like noise of an army. And when they stood still, they let down their wings. A voice came from above the firmament that was over their heads. Whenever they stood, they let down their wings, and above the firmament over their head was the likeness of a throne, in appearance like a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was a likeness with the appearance of a man high above it. Also from the appearance of his waist and upward I saw, as it were, the color of amber with the appearance of fire all around within it. Right. And from the appearance of his waist and downward I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire with brightness all around like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day. So was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. So there have been many attempts by artists to articulate what he has seen. We're going to go ahead and look through some of these items. Here's the first image. And you'll see this picture of a hand giving a scroll because later on as we read on, we'll see some more details. But you'll notice in the back, there's these seraphim-like creatures surrounded by fire with this wheel with eyes on it. And the wheels kind of just looks kind of weird. Then we see that there's this lion, the ox, and the face on there. Then we have this other image where it's kind of like this lightning appearance. And we see the eagle and the ox face. Right. Plus, then we see this artist's rendering of wheels attached to a chariot. And we see these seraphim that are around it. And then one at the top who has the appearance of likeness of the glory of God shining around it. On the right-hand side, we see more of like a new age type artistic experience where we see this body of a man and then these different faces that are surrounding him with these these four wings then we have this one here which shows like these angelic beings with these wings the wheels that are spinning and rotating like fire which evolves into something like this and i don't know if you guys can see that where we see these lights coming through these various rings of wheels that are spinning overhand with these winged characters right and then we have this image which is just kind of freaky looking where we see um it's just kind of weird looking where we see these type of angelic beings but then we have a lot of people who interpret this as this it looks like a spaceship, like a spaceship huh last, yeah sure does <laughs> That last slide that you showed where the lights were beaming down, you know, the other one right there, looks like a spaceship. Kind of looks like a spaceship, right? Something. So there are lots, lots and lots and lots of secular individuals who believe that Ezekiel is writing down an encounter of an alien encounter. They say he's describing a UFO. There's wheels in the sky that are spinning around. There's fire coming out of these wheels. There's these angels that are coming through. And they're, they're, there's this experience. There's another side of the commentary, that, or the, the scholars that say, no, absolutely not. There's no way that this could be a UFO. Um, it's a 50-50 it's a type split. And I would probably say there are more people that lean on the side of saying that it's not a UFO. OK, so I you're going to ask me for my opinion. I figured you would. I what's your guys' opinion. What do you think based upon the description that was given in the first part of Ezekiel, first chapter one? What do you think he saw? You think it was something more like this or more like the wagon that we've seen? Think it's more like a wagon. So I'm going to give my two cents. Nothing. I'm going to give my two cents. I'm going to go ahead and say that I think it was something more like this. Very specifically, just like this, without this this image lacks the angelic component where the, the beings that are there. Do I think it's a UFO? No, because 
Ezekiel was able to identify it. And by definition, a UFO is, is an unidentified flying object. I think that this is some unique way in which the glory of God is being presented to Job. And I think that the enemy that we have amongst us has different ways to try and emulate the things that God does, right? And so if you were to ask me what my thoughts are on this, we just recently had a, a congressional hearing where they have changed the name of UFOs to UAPs, which is unidentified anomalous phenomena, okay? And we have this gentleman, David Grush, who served 14 years as an intelligence officer in the U.S. Air Force and National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, appeared before the House of Oversight Committees to share that there has been a large amount of cover-up surrounding what we would consider UFOs. So again, the question that would become... Elliot, are you telling me that you believe that there's aliens and UFOs? And so I'm going to go ahead and respond to that with some scripture. Okay. Number one, by definition, what is an alien? Alien. Someone who doesn't originate here. Yes, Levi. An illegal alien is someone who, who's from another country. They're not from this land. So would a angels first estate be earth no so we would consider them alien to this land this isn't their home this isn't their abode they dwell within the heavens right same thing goes for demons right so when i see matthew chapter 24 when letters in red what does it mean it says jesus. So jesus speaking when Jesus says, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Do I think that the enemy will present himself in this demonic state that is trying to emulate something similar to what e Ezekiel experienced to try and say that he is the Christ when really it's something demonic happening? Yes, because I think Christ warned us of that. Furthermore, when we look at what Paul has to say, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I personally would not find it hard to imagine that Satan and his demons would contrive a plan of some type of a UFO type experience on this earth and present themselves as demons on our earth in a way to try and undermine the word of God. And I think that if if we weren't wouldn't consider that our enemy would be willing to go to those lengths, then we are putting ourselves in that position to be deceived as well. Okay. So on that note, I'm going to continue on with chapter two. And he said to me, Son of man. Go ahead, Miguel. What were you going to say? Oh no, because uh, the computer. Hold on, I'm calling Victoria. No. No. Uh, it said that if I want to make changes, no, sorry. You're good. Okay. So now moving into chapter two, and this is the voice of the Lord speaking to him. And he said to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day, for they are impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, 
Thus says the Lord God, as for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet will they know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns are with you and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words or dismayed by their looks, though they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Now, when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me and there was writing on the inside and on the outside and written on it were lamentations of mournings and woe. Now, Uncle Charlie, what does that remind you of? The scroll, what do you mean? The book of Revelation. Remember when John was told to eat the book? Yes, it right. Was, it was sweet in his mouth, but it was bitter in his stomach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. So this sounds a lot like that. A lot like what we heard about the other beasts and whatnot mm -hmm. in there. So I would definitely agree with you. I would say that we see a commonality in the scripture that is designed by its author, which is not Ezekiel, but the spirit, which has spanned thousands of years. Because Ezekiel was way before John and John's vision on the island of Patmos. So let's, let's read on. Moreover, he said to me, son of man, eat what you find, eat the scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with the scroll that I give you. So I ate it and it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. Then he said to me, son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak with my words to them. For you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language, but the house, but to the house of Israel. Not many people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language whose words cannot understand. Surely had I sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But to the house of Israel, they will not listen to you because they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. What does that, what is he saying here, babe? What do you think he's saying? Okay, go ahead. So God is holding him accountable to give the message. But no matter what, these people aren't going to receive the message. And then God even says to him, I'm not telling you that you have to go to a people of unfamiliar tongues. Because if they were people of an unfamiliar tongue, they would hear my words and would repent. We just got out of a book that was like that. Do you guys remember? Yes. And what happened with Jonah? Right. He was he was eaten by that beast, that great sea creature. But he went. He, no, he went to a nation of unbelievers, so to speak, right? Wicked men. And they all repented at the word that was given to them. So, but he didn't want to at first. He did not want to at first. Yeah, because they were wicked people and he felt like he they deserved the judgment that they got. So now we see here, for you are not sent to a people of an unfamiliar speech and heart of language, but to the house of Israel, not to many people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language whose words... You cannot understand. Surely, had I sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But the house of Israel will not listen to you because they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces. Stop. And your forehead strong against their foreheads like, a de like adamant stone. Harder than flint, I have made your forehead. Do not be afraid of them, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, receive into your heart all my words that I speak to you and hear with your ears. And go, 
get to the captives to tell the children of your people and speak to them and tell them, thus says the Lord your God, the Lord God, whether they hear or whether they refuse. Then the spirit lifted me up and I heard behind me a great thunderous voice. Blessed is the glory of the Lord from his place. I also heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels besides them and a great thunderous noise. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to the captives at Tel Abib who dwelt at the river Shabar and I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them for seven days. Now it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Mm -hmm. So this, this was something that was, I was really surprised to see here. Okay. What's being said here, Landon? Okay. What's being said here, babe? Do you get it? Okay. So God is telling Ezekiel, remember he's been sitting there seven days dwelling upon what just happened to him, that he needs to go and tell these people the news. And there are rebellious people and they're going to say no anyways. But if he doesn't tell them in an effort to spare them for not hearing this, that the blood of those people is going to be required at his hands. It's our responsibility to give the news. And this is the news that we are all sinners destined to hell. And there is nothing that we could do of our own volition to escape hellfire. But Christ gave us an out. He is the only way. John 3, 16, Michelle, go. Shall not perish, but have everlasting. Yes. The only way out, the only way to get past hellfire is through the completed work that Christ did on the cross. And if you love him, your life will show evidence of that in listening to his teachings. It's not a work-based system. It's a listen, love, live. You see what he says in the Beatitudes. We see all over the place things that God wants us to do, how we're supposed to talk to one another, how we're supposed to deal with animals, what we do about sin. We should be constantly changing for the better. So that's the message that he's told to give. Hey, you know what? You guys are destined for hell because of the iniquity that you have. And it's what's crazy about this is God is not requiring success from Ezekiel. He's only asking for obedience and sharing his message. There is no expectation that people are going to turn away from their wicked ways. It's Ezekiel's job to deliver them the warning. So I'm going to go back to where it says yet. Yet if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. Also, you will have delivered your soul. Then the hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Arise, go out into the plain, 
and there I shall talk with you. So I arose and went out on the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, like the glory which I saw by the river Shabar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit answered me and set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside your house, and you, O son of man, surely they will put ropes on you and bind you with them, so that you cannot go out among them. I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth, so that you shall be mute and not be one to rebuke them. For they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, He who hears, let him hear, and he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. Chapter 4 You also, son of man, Take a clay tablet and lay it before you, and portray on it a city, Jerusalem. Lay siege against it. Build a siege wall against it, and heap up a mound against it. Set camps against it also, and place battering rams against it all around. Moreover, take for yourself an iron plate, and set it as an iron wall between you and the city. Set your face against it, and it shall be besieged, and you shall lay siege against it. This will be a sign to the house of Israel. So, first sign that he's supposed to do is basically create an artist's rendering of Jerusalem and showing that it's going to be attacked. I've learned from other commentaries and from other, uh, so I should say the, the other scholars that talk about this is that Israel had a group of people, Jerusalem had a group of people that thought God would never let them be destroyed because they were God's chosen people. So no matter what, it didn't matter if the Assyrians were going to come in here and bust down the wall, God was going to deliver them just like he did with Moses and parted the Red Sea. But remember, these are a wicked and rebellious people. They're not serving God, they're serving idols, they're serving themselves. So that's where he's giving this warning. So here's the second sign. This will be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie on your left side and lay the... Mm, lie on your left side and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According to the number of days that you lie on it, shall you bear their iniquity. For I have laid on you the years of their iniquity according to the number of days... 390 days. So you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when you have completed them, lie again on your right side. Then you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. I have laid on you a day for each year. Therefore, you shall set your face toward the siege of Jerusalem. Your arms shall be uncovered and you shall prophesy against it. And surely I will restrain you so that you cannot turn from one side to another till you have ended the days of your siege. Also, take yourself wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt. Put them into one vessel and make bread of them for yourself. During the number of days that you lie on your side, 390 days, you shall eat it. And your food, which you shall eat, shall be by weight, 20 shekels a day. And from the time you shall eat it, you shall also drink water by measure, one-sixth of a hen, from the time that you shall drink. And you shall eat it as barley cakes and bake it using fuel from human waste in their sight. So, here's a sign of what's happening. He's literally supposed to take human poop and use it in the fire to cook this food with as a symbol to them to show them that they're going to be sieged and they're going to be destroyed and they're only going to be have a small ration of food. What does it mean when a city is under siege landing? You're getting attacked. And what did, how did they siege the city during that time? What did they do? Get any exactly. So all the farmland and all the things that they had access to water, what did they do? They cut off, they barricaded the gates and didn't let them out. So disease, famine, 
In this instance, the only thing that, that they would have to source for fuel was their poop to light under the fire. Yeah. We're going to see, listen to what Ezekiel says. So, then the Lord said, so shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles where I will drive them. So I said, ah, Lord God, indeed have never, indeed I have never defiled myself from my youth until now. I have never eaten what died of itself and was torn by beasts, nor has abominable flesh ever come into my mouth. Then he said to me, see, I am giving you cow dung instead of human waste, and you shall prepare your bread over it. Then he said to me, see, I am giving you a cow dung instead of human waste, and you shall prepare your bread over it. Moreover, he said to me, the son of, son of man, surely I will cut off the supply of bread in Jerusalem. They shall eat bread by weight with and weight by, by weight, weight and with anxiety. anxiety, and shall drink water by measure and with dread, that they may lack bread and water and be dismayed with one another and waste away because of their iniquity. Chapter five. And you, son of man, take a sharp sword. Take it as a barber's razor and pass it over your head and your beard. Then take scales to weigh and divide the hair. You shall burn with fire one third in the midst of the city. When the days of the siege are finished, then you shall take one third and strike it around with the sword and one third you shall scatter in the wind. I will drag out a sword after them. You shall also take a small number of them and bind them in the edge of your garment. Then take some of them again and throw them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. From there, a fire will go out into all the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the midst of the nations and the countries all around her. She has rebelled against my judgments by doing wickedness more than the nations and against my statutes more than the countries that are all around her. For they have refused my judgments and they have not walked in my statutes. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have multiplied disobedience more than the nations that are all around you, have not walked in my statutes nor kept my judgments, nor even done according to the judgments of the nations that are all around you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, indeed, I, even I, am against you and will execute judgments in your midst in the sight of the nations. And I will do among you what I have never done and the like of which I will never do again because of all your abominations. Therefore, fathers shall eat their sons in your midst and son shall eat their fathers and i will execute judgments among you and all of you who remain i will scatter to all the winds therefore as i live says the lord god surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all your abominations therefore will i will also diminish you my eye will not spare you nor will i have any pity one third of you shall die of pestilence and be consumed with famine in your midst. And one third shall fall by the sword all around you. And I will scatter another third to all the winds and I will draw out the sword after them. Thus shall my anger be spent and I will cause my fury to rest upon them and I will be avenged. And they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have spent my fury upon them. Moreover, I will make you a waste and a reproach among the nations that are all around. In the sight of all the who pass by, so it shall be a reproach, a taunt, a lesson, and an astonishment to the nations that are all around you when I execute judgments among you in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken when I send against them the terrible arrows of famine which shall be for destruction. Which I will send to destroy you. 
I will increase the famine upon you and cut off your supply of bread. So I will send against you famine and wild beasts, and they will bereave you. Pestilence and blood shall pass through you, and I will bring the sword against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy against them. And say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the ravines, and to the valleys. Indeed, I, even I, will bring a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Then your altars shall be desolate, your incense altars shall be broken, and I will cast down your slain men before your idols, and I will lay the corpses of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones all around your altars. In all your dwelling places the city shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate so that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate. Your idols may be broken and made to cease. Your incense altars may be cut down and your works may be abolished. The slain shall fall in your midst and you shall know that I am the Lord. Yet I will leave a remnant so that you may have some who escape the sword among the nations when you are scattered through the countries. Then those of you who escape will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive because I was crushed by their adulterous heart, which has departed from me. And by their eyes, which play the harlot after their idols, they will loathe themselves for the evils which they committed in all their abominations. And they shall know that I am the Lord. I have not said in vain that I would bring this calamity upon them. Thus though says the Lord God, Pound your fists and stamp, stomp your feet and say, Alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword by famine and by pestilence. He who is afar off shall die by the pestilence. He who is near shall fall by the sword, and he who remains and is besieged shall die by the famine. Thus will I spend my fury upon them, then you shall know that I am the Lord when their slain are among their idols and all around their altars on every high hill, on all the mountaintops, under every green tree and under every thick oak, wherever they offered sweet incense to all their idols. So I will stretch out my hand against them and make the land desolate. Yes, more desolate than the wilderness toward Dibla in all their dwelling places then they shall know that I am the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, and you son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel, an end, the end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now the end has come upon you and I will send my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways and I will repay you for all your abominations. My eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity. But I will repay your ways, and your abominations will be in your midst. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, a disaster, a singular disaster. Behold, it has come. And the end has come. The end has come, and it is dawn for you. Behold, it has come. Doom has come to you, you who dwell in the land. The time has come. A day of trouble is near and not of rejoicing in the mountains. Now upon you I will soon pour out my fury and spend my anger upon you. I will judge you according to your ways and I will repay you for all your abominations. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. I will repay you according to your ways. And your abominations... And your abominations will be in your midst. Then you shall know that I am the Lord who strikes. Everybody who rejects Christ is subject to this, guys. Behold the day. Behold it has come. Doom has gone out. The rod has blossomed. Pride has budded. Violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain. None of their multitude. None of them. Nor shall there be a wailing for them. The time has come. The day draws near. 
Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is on their whole multitude. For the, the seller shall not return to what has been sold, though he may still be alive. For the vision concerns the whole multitude, and it shall not turn back. No one will strengthen himself who lives in iniquity. They have blown the trumpet and made everyone ready, but no one goes to battle. For my wrath is on all their multitude. The sword is outside and the pestilence and famine within. Whoever is in the field will die by the sword and whoever is in the city, famine and pestilence will devour him. Those who survive will escape and be on the mountains like doves of the valley. And all of them mourning, each for his iniquity. Every hand will be feeble and every knee will be as weak as water. They will also be girded with sackcloth. Horror will cover them. Shame will be on every face, baldness on their heads. They will throw silver into the streets and their gold will be like refuse. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They will not satisfy their souls nor fill their stomachs because it became their stumbling block of iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornaments, he set in it in majesty, but they made from it the images of their abominations, their detestable things. Therefore, I have made it like refuse to them. I will give it as plunder into the hands of strangers and to the wicked of the earth as spoil, and they shall defile it. I will turn my face from them, and they will defile my secret place. For robbers shall enter it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is filled with crimes of blood, and the city is full of violence. Therefore, I will bring the worst of the Gentiles, and they will possess their houses. I will cause the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction comes. They will speak peace, but there shall be none. Disaster will become upon disaster, and rumor, rumor will be upon rumor. Then they will seek a vision from a prophet, but the law will perish from the priest in the council of the elders. The king will mourn, the prince will be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the common people will tremble. I will do to them according to their way and according to what they deserve. I will judge them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I'm going to stop on chapter eight. We'll, we'll finish up chapter eight next week. Uh, my recommendation was to read 10 chapters. The chapters, a couple of the chapters get thick, but there's quite a few thin chapters. So if you guys could make it to chapter 18, that would be awesome. Um, any thoughts 